Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. Uh, this is the Fordham edition. I'm Michael Kay, along with my Fordham alum friend, uh, Ryan Rucco. Uh, Ryan, obviously, uh, no NBA, no Nets, no Yankees. How are you holding up? It's weird, man. It's so weird. It's funny because I now have, like, found myself – actually like fully engrossing in the classic games you know like at first i was like oh it was close enough to the recent games that i wasn't totally in it yet now if i see a game on i'm like i, I just need to i just need to see some action man how about you how's everybody doing in the k household it's it's okay i mean uh, i give the kids credit they're five and seven years old so this is not normal for them that you know they miss being with their friends and you know technology allows them to have like zoom play dates with their friends <laughs> but that's still not the same thing and you know, Jody's obviously getting worn out teaching two full curriculums. Um, and because they go to public school, uh, a lot of the private schools actually have teachers teach the, the, the classes on Zoom for the whole day. But wow. in public, you have to make it equal for everybody. So some people might not have the bandwidth or the internet, so you can't do it. So they send, they send it over the computers, and you have, to, you have to teach the kids yourself. So it's kind of difficult. Jody's worn out. Yeah, I would imagine. You know what, see, I'm glad you gave that explanation because I, I, Andrea, my fiance, and I were literally talking about this earlier. Like, how are kids being taught during this period of time? Because who knows if students are going to go back to school at any point during, you know, the remaining, uh, you know, months of this school year. And I, I've actually, you know, I've just assumed, yeah, they're doing it technologically, but I didn't realize that it's actually on the parents to then, you know, actually deliver the curriculum to the kids. Yeah, and then, you know, there's, there doesn't seem, I mean, I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, Ryan, but we haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Pennsylvania today canceled the remainder of the school year. So I'm sure it's going to happen here at some point. And then you don't know, is it going to start up again before a vaccine? Can you really have a six year old and then an eight year old go, you know, kids are going to get close to each other. They're going to pick their nose and things like that. So uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I, I, that, that's the stuff that fills you. With anxiety, I mean, people are, you know, thank God, people we know have, uh, we haven't lost anybody, but we we have had people that have had it that have been in the hospital for a while. And Ryan, I know for a fact that this is, has touched you in a real way in terms of your life plans because you had a destination wedding planned for for Italy, and you guys, I guess, the only thing to do was to cancel it, right? Yeah, we had to postpone it, man. It was. Um... You know, of course, it stinks, right? Like, you know, we're, sure. uh, we're, we were getting close down to the wire. It was scheduled for June. Andrea and I have been engaged for, you know, a year and a half, essentially. So it was like, it, you know, there was a lot of buildup, you know, and we were, mm -hmm. I had just had my bachelor party uh, in mid-February. Like, it, it really, like, was, it, we're down to all the nitty gritty. And, um, and, you know, we're just so excited. And Italy, you know how much Italy means to me. And it's a magical place to both of us. And, so when it had started, when COVID had started to really like pop up there, I was following it closely. And, you know, the reactions, a lot of people started asking me like, hey, you worried about the wedding, you worried about the wedding. And I'm like, yeah, I'm worried about the wedding, but this isn't going to be an Italy problem. This is going to be an everyone problem, you know? And, and the interesting thing is now, like, regardless of where our wedding was, June, you wouldn't feel safe at this point knowing you're going to be able to have a gathering of any kind of people, you know? So I think, you know, Andrea and I have both, you know, tried to take the perspective of like, hey, we're healthy, we're safe, our, you know, our loved ones are healthy and safe. That's what's most important. And obviously people are dealing with incredibly dramatic things during this time and heart-wrenching things. Um, but within that scope, it still stinks, you know? It's still sad. And we definitely had our moments of real sadness about it for sure. Now, also, if you went through with it, it's hard to kiss the bride when she's six feet away. I mean, there's social distancing <laughs> running. You can't be doing that. So. Now, I'm also curious, so have, have, have you postponed it to next year? Yeah, so we're going to do it in June of next year. In Does Italy. that mean that you're going to have another bachelor party? Because yes. that would be wrong. Well, that, the, my, my bachelor party group chat is already insisting that's what it means. I, wow. I, I'm not sure if that's what it means. Well, maybe we'll just have to do like, a reunion night in the city or something like that. We went to Bahamas this year, so I don't know uh -huh. that we're going to be able to duplicate that, but we'll have to do something. Whenever the wedding happens, really, the standard we're going to be trying to hit is the K Applegate wedding because <laughs> your, your wedding was, I, I feel like everybody who attended it calls it the greatest party of their lives, Michael. What, like, I mean, 
What do you remember most about that epic party at the plaza? It's weird, you know, like I'm, we're, we're so fortunate and blessed that people that went to the party and there were 302 people there <laughs> have said that that's the best wedding they've ever been to. You know, Jody and I kind of look at it and as you'll find out, you know, you are the main attraction at the, at the wedding, but you don't really get a chance to party. I mean, you have to go around to the tables and make small talk and thank people and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully maybe in 20 years we'll get remarried again and we'll really be able to enjoy it. But the thing that stands out the most in my mind was like when Jody and I came down, you know, the aisle. Yeah. And we came down individually, obviously. Uh, and Jody picked out a song and she didn't know if the crowd would get it because, you know, I was 50 years old and I'd never been married. You know, Ryan, you've known mm -hmm. me a long time and I never wanted to be married. I never thought I would be. And when I came down the aisle, it was, they played the song at last. Yeah. <laughs> and it was such, I got like goosebumps down my, uh, my, my neck because the whole crowd started laughing. They got it, you know? Jody didn't think they were going to get it. It was like her private little joke. But yeah, at last, this fool was finally doing it. So uh, <laughs> I heard it was a great night. Uh, one of the things that stands out in my mind is the next day in the New York Post, they wrote about the wedding, and they had a lot of things wrong. Yeah. Like Bernie Williams jammed with the, uh, <laughs> with the band, and um, Steven Tyler was up there with the band. They weren't even at the wedding. Do you, wait, do you so, know, to, to this day... I don't, it says Robert De Niro was there. If like, if you go on your Wikipedia, Bobby De Niro wasn't there, was he? You can't really trust Wikipedia because they say that Bob Lorenz dates my sister, Debbie. So that's, it's just wrong. <laughs> but you know, we, we, had a, we had a breakfast at the plaza after the wedding and, and Tino Martinez was a guest and he was there and he was sitting there uh, and he's reading the newspaper as, you know, he's eating his eggs or whatever. And Jody and I are at like the table or, or two over and, uh, he goes, you know what the best thing about this post story is? I said, what's that? He goes, Bernie's actually going to think he was here. And he wasn't. He's going to read it and think that he was here. <laughs> oh, my Bernie God. Bernie was not there. <laughs> it's, Bernie has that, like, he has that charm, right? Even, like, he was in the booth for one of the spring training games with David and I this March. And it's so funny. We see it, Michael, with all the guys, all of his teammates. It's just like – they have this absolutely wholesome love for Bernie because his, I mean, his aloofness, it's just to each and every one of them, it is so endearing. His teammates just love it about him. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not aloofness in the pejorative definition of the word. He's just like kind of in his own world. Yeah. And I think that's what made him a great player. And I think there's some, some of his teammates wonder that if he was intense, like an O'Neill type of intense, with his skill set, would he be a Hall of Famer? But other guys that I've spoken to said, you know, the thing that made him great was he was able to shake off an 0 for 4 and just sit there and strum the guitar. And he didn't think too much at the plate. It was just Bernie being Bernie. That was the beginning of Bernie being Bernie. So, uh, yeah, th those teams were great. And I know that on those teams, you, your, your favorite player of all time, right? Oh, come on. Andrew Eugene Pettit. Absolutely, man. It's funny because I, now, like, when I've seen those, like, late 90s games on that we're running on Yes Network right now with our Yankees Classics, I'm even, like, more um, in tune to them just because, it's it, obviously, we want to see baseball. And, yep, there's the stare. There yeah. it is. And it's just, like, it's taking me back. Michael, these are the kind of conversations you can have right now about sports. I, I don't know how you're doing what you're doing on the air every day for four hours, man. I'm so glad you are because it gives all of us something familiar and something – you know, to watch on Yes um, or listen to on 98.7 FM. But uh, it's got to be challenging for you, Peter and Don, right now. You, the thing is that I'm doing with Peter and Don. So even if there's not stuff to talk about sports-wise, and there has been, ironically enough, because there are storylines. Obviously, there aren't games going on. But, you know, we can kid with each other and have conversations that way. But people that do a show alone, I mean, we've done it a month now. So we've done four weeks of shows where there have not been any sports. So NFL free agency was great for us. Uh, I think the NFL draft is going to be great for us. All the iterations of how, how sports might come back, those are things that we can talk about. But at some point, if this continues into June or July, you really do have to wonder how long my hair is going to be and how great it's going to be. And I don't know how we're going to come up with um, 20 hours and 25 minutes of, uh, of content each week. But you know, those are the rules of engagement. And it does give me you – know, I always wondered, Ryan – yeah. When players had something going on in their personal life and they'd go, you know what, the, the best time were the three hours when I got between the lines because you got your mind off of it. And I thought that was kind of cliche, 
but it's not. You know, those four hours when I'm on the mic, I have a job to do and I'm trying to entertain people. And it does take your mind off this awful situation that the whole planet's going through. So it's kind of like our version of, uh, of between the lines. Now, that's how I, uh, you know, fill my time. You're with Andrea. You obviously can fill your time talking with her and reading or whatever the case may be. We want to know what all of our, our Yes family is doing. So please send us videos at any of our social media platforms and hashtag it, yes, we're here. Tell us how you're getting through the day, Ryan. I'm sure that people have an awful lot of stories, that's for sure. Uh, I, absolutely. I would love to hear that because there's just so many unique avenues that uh, people can walk down right now to get through this time. So we'd love to hear from you guys. You obviously are hearing more and more from us about how we are managing this time. So please uh, follow Michael's instructions and, and tweet at us, post on our Instagram and with that hashtag and let us know what you guys are up to. And you know, we, we love everybody out there that, that consumes yes in any way. We love everybody. I think everybody should feel that way uh, at this time. Wash your hands, social distancing, and not so much social, just physical, because keep in touch with your friends. Keep in touch with people that are living alone. That's really important because social distancing drives people batty because they do need social interaction. Just physical distancing is the most important thing. So do everything that, that you're being told by the experts and the scientists and hopefully Ryan will get through this. And I know you're living in Manhattan and, and that worries me. You know, you stay in your apartment, that, that's like a hot spot too. We need to you know, flatten the curve and get everybody back and get sports back as well. Amen, man. Well said. And, and to everybody out there, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. And Michael, same to you and the family there. And thank you for uh, giving us entertainment on the air each day, uh, even as you guys are having to rack your brains to come up with material. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, we'll continue to have Yes, We're Here, all of our different people on the air. Uh, we hope that you're enjoying it as well. So for Ryan Rucco, I'm Michael Kay. Stay safe, everybody. See you.